I could floss. I could pill the cat. I could try to get angry. I could write a poem about what an idiot you are for dumping me. Fool. Ingrate. Lover. You. I hope you're happy you killed love. Happy with the knife you used. I hope you whisper that knife pet names. I hope you and the knife ride into the sunset together. I hope your high horse dies because while riding your knife accidentally pierces it through the heart. I hope it stares at you with its dying eyes. I hope you meet a new girl, one with eyes like a dying horse. I hope you're happy. I hope that when you try to carve your initials into her thigh, you're suddenly dyslexic. I hope the trees laugh at you and it sounds like dying horses. I hope that when you try to carve into that girl, she says, stop, don't, I don't love you. I hope the girl is a knife. I hope you go looking for another girl. I hope there's a girl shortage. I hope you can't find a girl for miles, but you walk on sore feet since you killed your horse. I hope you're lonely. I hope you cry. I hope you cry my name as the knife starts looking good to you. I hope you lick its tip and cut your tongue. I hope the knife gets excited. I hope the knife wants to kiss your neck, your belly, lower. I hope you kiss it back. I hope it kisses like your horse. I hope it cuts through you like that girl. I hope the taste of blood makes you think of me, wonder if I could ever forgive you as I pill the cat. I floss. I try and get angry. I write a poem. I fail midnight and alone. I write. I write your knife, and I name it after me. <laughs> Now we've had the break and we can let the healing begin. This is the title poem, it's called 15 Ways to Stay Alive. One, offer the wolves your arm only from the elbow down. Leave tourniquet space. Don't offer them your calves, don't offer them your side. Don't let them near your femoral artery, your jugular, give them only your arm. Two, wear chapstick when kissing the bomb. Three, pretend you don't know English. Four, pretend you never met her. Five, offer the bomb to the wolves. Offer the wolves to the zombies. Six, only insert a clean knife into your chest. Rusty ones will call this tetanus or infection. Seven, don't inhale. Eight, realize that this love was not your train wreck, was not the truck that flattened you, was not your Waterloo, did not cause massive hemorrhaging from a rusty knife. Because you see, that love is still to come. Nine, use a rusty knife to cut through most of the noose in a strategic place so it breaks under your weight. 10, practice desperate pleas for attention, louder calls for help, learn them in English, French, Spanish, Mayday, et et moi, a you to May, 11, don't kiss train wrecks. Don't kiss knives. Don't kiss. 12. Pretend you made up the zombies and only superheroes exist. 13. Pretend there's no kryptonite. 14. Pretend there was no love so sweet that you would have died for it. Pretend that it doesn't belong to someone else now. Pretend like your heart depends on it because it does. Pretend there's no train. You watched the train go by and felt the airbrush your face and that was it. It was just another train passing. And you don't need trains. Because you can fly. You're a superhero, and there is no kryptonite. Fifteen, forget her name. Mm. <laughs> Evan, you can shut your ears because you've heard this one a couple times. Okay. It's called Carpe Noctum. Woo! Once upon a time, your parents were a time bomb written in lipstick. Now you are a love letter written in blood. No one wants to think about their parents having sex. My mother told me the last time she and my father had sex was after his chemotherapy. He insisted they use a condom. He said, I don't know what's in me. He said, I don't want it in you. They were going at it when the Jehovah's Witnesses knocked at the door. It's a message from God, they said. And they laughed, and that laughed, and then they didn't. They started kissing again. You are now the age your parents used to be. 
We did not know we were beautiful at 20. Our radiant skin still knew. We had lungs and heart and breathing. We had coil and electricity and spark. We proved our bodies against each other in twos or more and faster. Or just by ourselves, our skin, some fresh toy, our lips wet with sun. To act as if our bodies are messages from God. Things go wrong over time. The back doesn't twist or bend, up things don't, and the wet things aren't. Bodies study or going fail, and then sooner or later they stop failing at all. The point is before that. The point is yes. The point is there are many things I've done to bodies. I've held, kissed, caressed, sucked, licked, bitten them. I've stuck things in them. I've tickled and hit them and tied them up like trust chickens. And once I wrote sissy and needles on an inner thigh. I've loved them. I have loved them. I have found shelter. I've gone to church. I've gone home, my lips wet with sun. To act with the knowledge that our bodies are God. I've been told I fuck too much, too hard, too fast for a girl, but I'm not a girl anymore. I'm a woman, my heart keeps like prize fighters' fists, and I have not stopped yet. I will not stop. I will tell you I was built for pleasure because it sounds good. I will tell you I was built for pleasure because I was not built for work and I was not built for pain and I will say it over and over because it's true I was built for pleasure. The top five causes of death in the United States are heart disease, cancer, stroke, respiratory disease and accidents. The only cause of human life so far is orgasm. The point is to learn that we are radiant now. Once upon a time, your parents were a time bomb written in lipstick. Now you are a love letter written in blood. There is a message from God written inside my mouth. You can only read it with your tongue. The word is, the point is, yes. Why?